Hello and uh, good morning all of you. I welcome all of you at the Sustainable Healthcare Conclave uh, Karnataka chapter where we talk about building healthcare infrastructure together. And uh, today we have eminent speakers with us from the state of Karnataka who are associated with the healthcare and healthcare infrastructure along with industry leaders. Let me first inform all of you that the Sustainable Healthcare Conclave series is organized by APEC News Network and supported by Schneider Electric. With this campaign, we're going to various states. We're creating this kind of knowledge sharing platform where the best of the minds can come together and discuss and deliberate upon the various aspects of building that comprehensive healthcare infrastructure ecosystem where sustainability uh, will be a focal area where we talk about technology innovation and how we all can work together to create that blueprint for the future to move into the right direction. And for the Karnataka chapter of the Sustainable Healthcare Conclave, for the inaugural session, we have got eminent speakers with us, thought leaders with us. Let me first inform all of you who have joined with us for this inaugural session. We have with us Sri Srinivasan N. Executive Director Technical of Karnataka Urban Infrastructure Development and Finance Corporation, commonly known as KUIDFC. Welcome, sir. Thank you so much for joining us today. We're also joined by Shubhankar Pramanik, Deputy CIO and Senior Director of Manipal Health Enterprises. We welcome Mr. Pramanik. Thank you so much for joining us today. We are also joined by Dr. K. Madan Gopal, Senior Consultant Health, Niti Aayog Government of India. He has joined us virtually. So we welcome him as well. And we're also joined by Mr. Amit Mishra, segment head, Healthcare Greater India, Schneider Electric. We welcome Mr. Amit, thank you so much for joining us today. And I've been told that we'll be joined by Sri D. Randi, Commissioner of Health and Family Welfare Services, Government of Karnataka. Shortly, he'll be the chief guest for the inaugural session. So without taking much time, let me first in invite Sri Srinivasan N. for his thoughts on digital strategies for transforming public health and creating connected digital healthcare ecosystem with a special focus on urban healthcare infrastructure. Over to you, sir. A huge round of applause for him, please. Good morning, friends. Uh, I am Srinivas, Executive Director from Karnataka Urban Infrastructure Development and Finance Corporation. We are an arm of Karnataka Urban Development Department and the nodal agency for implementation of the Smart Cities Mission in Karnataka, uh, which is a flagship project of the central government running from 2015-16 and will be culminating during next year. So as a part of the Karnataka Smart City Mission, I am in charge of the seven smart cities which have been selected under the mission. And I would like to focus mainly on the opportunities that are available for the health sector both public and private entrepreneurs as well as the industry uh, through a presentation which will give us you a glimpse of what we are trying to do under the mission so that which can be carried forward in a great way through a collaborative mode from both the industry and the entrepreneurs of the healthcare sector. So in this context, I would just like to move on. Uh, so under the Smart Cities mission, we have about eight verticals, which you can see on the screen. And the smart healthcare occupies the foremost place on the top right hand corner, along with the smart energy, smart technology, smart infrastructure, smart mobility, smart governance and smart education and smart buildings, of course, to house all these entities at a place. So with these objectives, we have carved out our action plans for all the seven smart cities in the state, uh, including Bangalore. Uh, we start from Bangalore. Next, we have Tumkur, Davangere, Hubli Darwad, Belagam, Shumaga, and Mangalore. So we have covered almost most of the geographical uh, prominent tier two cities and tier one city being Bangalore in the state under the mission. So these cities have been selected through a competition mode uh, they have competed with more than 300 and odd cities and finally 100 plus cities have been selected under the mission and Karnataka has got seven out of them. So 
coming specifically to the healthcare projects uh, we have listed ourselves the objectives to build a world class healthcare infrastructure so that we want to demonstrate that any government healthcare sector setup is as good as any private or a world care healthcare provision will be made even through this smart city mission the enhanced accessibility to healthcare that is a second objective we have mooted so we want to see that the distance between a person traveling to a hospital or any healthcare facility are minimized considering the geographic spread of the cities and the rapid urbanization of our cities we feel there is a need to have a penetration of this healthcare facilities not only in the core part of the city but to the extensions as well as the satellite towns which are very rapidly coming up around all our tier 2 cities like hubli darwad belagam and mangalore so we have lot of uh, potential in this sector to provide accessibility for all the citizens of the city per se and as well as the peri urban areas and next comes the affordable health care facility so we would like to ensure that even the most downtrodden or underprivileged sections of the society will get a good access and also a better access to the health care facilities through the intervention of our smart cities mission and of course all these things we want to leverage the smart technology and use the smart healthcare apps or platforms for efficient healthcare monitoring it can be right from the patient registration to his patient history recording monitoring and also further care of that patient in case of repeated healthcare issues and the most important is the resilient emergency services because we could see that many a person in case of accidents like from tumkur or some chitradurga they has they have to travel to bangalore or they have to go the other way up to hubli to have a good trauma care facilities and after the development of this golden quadrilateral roads and a very good network of roads we are finding there is a huge need for this emergency services due to this accident prone highways which though gives you a better access and speed it also is susceptible for many accidents also so in that aspect we are trying to do something under the smart city mission on a pilot mode and the most important of all is the health education awareness wherein we are trying to rope in the citizens as well as the children uh, to catch them young so that we spread this awareness about the healthcare importance of healthcare facilities and how to access them what are the avenues they can look at when they want to have a better health care access so with this objective we have a fourfold strategy for the health sector interventions under the smart cities mission of course the first one being the infrastructure and then we are looking at providing medical equipments uh, digital medical equipments to all our government hospitals leverage the ict through our integrated command and control centers under the mission we have created a one city one command center in all our smart cities except bangalore all other six smart cities have gone live with this command and control centers and they are connected to all the stakeholders of the city it may be a health sector it may be a city governance it may be the transport sector it may be a law and order for crime detection traffic everything is connected under this integrated command and control center and of course the emergency response system which i was just mentioning so based on these four pillars i would like to present as to what is been completed and what are the projects under way in karnataka under the smart cities mission so these are the very uh, important things which we have tried to list out here uh, if you come to the infrastructure sector we are constructing health care centers to cater to the peri urban areas in the city because we know that we have a concentration of health care facilities like primary health centers urban health centers some district hospitals taluk level hospitals in the core part of the city but due to rapid urbanization we have a need 
for this penetration of these healthcare centers into the exterior outer part of the cities so we are trying to focus on that we are trying to enhance the accessibility for maternity centers uh, basically to serve the uh, underprivileged sections of the society and of course construction of trauma centers uh, at many tier 2 cities like tumkur davangere hubli darwad apart from bangalore so when we come to the medical equipments these are just a sample of things which we have tried to provide like high flow nasal cannulas blood separation units automatic nuclear acid extractors and of course we are trying to promote this hygiene uh, aspect through sanitary vending machine and incinerators in many of our ho government hospitals and uh, ladies hostels in colleges and other places when it comes to the ict enabled technology enabled uh, Uh, solution we are trying to look at smart healthcare solutions virtual clinics to provide telemedicine facility remote access to the uh, consultations and other thing and when it comes to emergency response system the trauma centers are the physical part of it we are trying to give advanced life support support uh, ambulances to the cities and also we have created a digital nerve center at tumkur which will be providing 24 by 7 telemedicine facilities for not only for the tumkur it will be catering for the whole district so if you look at the investment part of it so currently all seven smart cities in karnataka put together we have invested about 300 crores as i would like mentioning this is only a pilot projects which we are trying to showcase in these cities so that the cities can replicate these projects through corporate social responsibility and with an active collaboration of both public and private partnership so uh, there are about 43 projects and uh, if you just see the city wise investment uh, of course bangalore has got the major chunk of it followed by tumkur and hubli darwad and um, all other cities have pitched in with their investment towards the health sector so these are some of the interventions already completed in those cities the digital nerve center in tumkur or anc extractor in shivamogga there are a lot of infrastructure things which have been taken up and completed in many of the tier 2 cities i think which uh, there are there are some slides next uh, which will be hi highlighting the city wise interventions so uh, when we come to the belagavi so as i told in order to ensure the accessibility of healthcare facility for the peri urban areas we have constructed two hospitals one at uh, vantamuri a maternity hospital and the second one at vadagaon these are on the outskirts of the belagavi city so just give me a second so both these facilities are up and running and uh, they are catering to the uh, most of the extension areas of the belagavi and when you come to davangere so we have provided the blood separation unit to the red cross society apart from that we have provided a modern maternity center uh, for majorly catering to the slum uh, areas of davangere uh, i think you all know the uh, specialty of davangere being this mandaki the puffed rice units so this hospital is concentrated or located at that location wherein lot of downtrodden people uh, will be accessing this facility they had a very Uh, obsolete facility which was available there so now we have put up a very good facility there and it is up and running so when we come to the hubli darwad so it is one city which has uh, go gone live with a smart healthcare provision which has smart kiosks al along with telemedicine facility right from the patient registration monitoring of the history the treatment given and everything is being monitored under the smart healthcare and i am happy to note that it has been introduced through a hospital which is run by the city corporation it's a chitaguppi hospital so apart from this smart intervention we have also upgraded this chitaguppi hospital by adding one floor so if you can see the level of intervention what has been done it is an on, on par with any private sector hospital which is being uh, uh, functional in bangalore or any other place so in bangalore we have taken the great steps in fact let me tell you that we have put up a 37 bedded icu in a government venlock hospital in a record time of 45 days so all the two photos which you see on the screen uh, you can just uh, see and uh, 
uh, gauge yourself the level of intervention that has happened there it has got all the facility for an icu and it has catered very well during the covid uh, pandemic particularly during the first and second wave and it was very much helpful for the city health administration to tackle the pandemic in mangalore as you know it was one of the high concentrated area in terms of pandemic due to the uh, incoming traffic from the gulf and other nations so apart from this icu bed we are trying to put up a additional floor for a lady goshen hospital it is also a hospital which caters largely to the poor sex poorer section of the society uh, we had a very dilapidated building uh, for this hospital now with the help of the karnataka health systems development and the smart city mission we are able to put in a new infrastructure which you can see uh, and it is up and functional and we are also constructing a hospital a surgical block with about 9 to 10 operation theaters in catering more than 450 beds which is coming up and this is scheduled to be completed by the year end or so uh, when we move to shivamogga so again shivamogga we have put in some interventions in the shivamogga institute of medical sciences the government medical college there uh, with respect to furnitures equipments and also a lot of infrastructure works have been taken care in shivamogga also and this is a automatic nuclear acid extractor provided for a sims hospital in shivamogga so tumkur is coming up with a great intervention not only through this advanced life support ambulances and it has created the rt pcr laboratory during the covid 19 it has built in a digital nerve center for 24 bar 7 medical support on call for any covid related emergency and it is has now continued its functioning through our support smart city intervention support and it is sustained to cater for the non pandemic time also apart from this we are also trying to put in some primary health care centers upgradation of those centers providing better facilities in those places and the major intervention at tumkur is this trauma care center which has uh, which is almost nearing completion it is in the premise of the district hospital at tumkur so this is a current status and this is the final look how it is going to be so this is where i would like you to appreciate the level of intervention which we are trying to do even though on a pilot mode so that we can showcase the potential of this health care facilities in our tier 2 cities so that the load on the major city like bangalore or hubli darwad or belgaum will reduce and the people of the tier and tier 2 and tier 3 cities will be able to have a better access to healthcare facilities in lot many places in karnataka so bangalore has got the major chunk of this intervention during this uh, pandemic for covid so we have provided high flow nasal cannula for the bangalore medical college um, for the gastroenterology sciences there are a lot of ct scanning machines and all those equipments which have been provided for vani vilas hospital and uh, kidwai memorial institute of oncology and some infrastructure improvements done around vani vilas hospital victoria hospital and uh, if you can see for bangalore medical college we have provided this electrical buggies uh, uh, battery operated buggies for easy transfer of patients uh, mobility and also some uh, greenscaping landscaping in those hospitals and of course there are some provision made to rajiv gandhi chest diseases like flexible bronchoscope machines and other uh, interventions which have been provided through the bangalore smart city so these are the things which we have done under the intervention so i would like to just uh, run through this initiatives which were taken up during the covid 19 all our integrated command and control centers were converted into a war room by the district administration so we utilized a combination of all the interventions made under the smart city like the digital display boards we have erected up the intelligent poles in all these cities which will not only cater for this display boards it also gives the health system uh, or the air monitoring quality systems it also gives you a surveillance camera it has a panic button it has a public address system which can be remotely addressed for crowd dispersion or for any dissemination of information in the cities similarly the cctvs which have been extensively uh, installed all around the cities 
have been helping us not only for the covid management like public crowd detection they are also helping in other non pandemic times also to avoid unnecessary crowd gathering or if there is some procession which is going on in that road it helps the police to reroute the traffic to take up efficient surveillance systems and as i told you the public address system which are available on our intelligent poles has a remote address facility so wherein my person sitting at the integrated command control center will be able to relay messages across the city in case of emergencies in case of any pandemic uh, issues so that is one thing which we have extensively used during the covid times and of course the intelligent transport system is one of the solution in all the smart cities wherein we have tried to put in this gps systems for all the ambulance system the fire service system and also the public transport system so these ambulances which has this gps tracking has helped us to reroute the patients to the hospitals where the beds are available during the pandemic and also it helps in navigation of these ambulances in the least uh, congestion routes in the city so that the travel time the lead time in order to utilize the golden hour uh, is ensured so apart from this we have also mapped this covid-19 patient particularly in bangalore uh, on the google maps so that we can know the concentration of these patients in the bangalore and how to define a containment area and in case there is a movement how do we actually control these uh, patients within their confinement area you all know but you know all those bad days have gone and we are happy that we are not monitoring to such an extent now but during that time it was very much inevitable inevitable to do all these things so that has also been done through this uh, covid war room so this are the glimpses of our uh, command and control center at the cities all the six cities are up and live and uh, we have a common data center which is being built in bangalore to cater to the need of this uh, command control center where the entire data of the state will converge will be able to analyze those data and give credible inputs to the cities to enhance their healthcare systems and all other systems which are needed for the governance of the city so this is some of the uh, screen grabs i have taken during the public crowd detection during the pandemic which has been taken up from some cities these are the display boards which used to display which are displaying many of the health relevant messages health related uh, announcements in the city through the command control center this is a public address system which has a remote which can be remotely accessed through our control command center for dissemination of information throughout the city these are some more things like the intelligent transport system to track the ambulances you can see the location of those ambulances which are moving and this is a mapping of covid-19 patient in google maps uh, i think this is for bangalore if i am right yeah bangalore uh, so i think uh, that's it that's a small thing i would like to present from the smart cities mission perspective i would request the the healthcare industry the entrepreneurs and the private sector to chip in and uh, make great contribution for the health sector of karnataka so that we can all as a team take this uh, initiatives into a big uh, mode so that our citizens will gain from this so i would like to thank the organizers for this opportunity and also thank uh, my team members prachi and shrinivas for putting up this small presentation to you all thank you and have a great day uh thanks uh, that was uh, uh, shrinivas and uh, executive director or technical of karnataka urban infrastructure development and finance corporation kuidfc and as you have rightly pointed out that it's not only about uh, transforming the healthcare infrastructure in entire one cities but you have gone down to the entire two cities and almost 294 crore we are spending 2294 crores for 43 projects and as you have said that uh, ict healthcare infrastructure these are the three four pillars where you are focusing and i'm sure uh the thoughts shared by you uh, where you are also looking for collaboration with industry uh, this kind of knowledge sharing platform will help to find your partners uh, to implement or realize your vision of smart healthcare under smart city mission with a special focus on infrastructure and technology thank you so much i request mr gopi krishna arora co-founder of apex news network to come on stage and hand over a token of appreciation to mr srinivas 
and a huge round of applause for him please you're talking about the sustainability uh, of healthcare so we thought to give away with this uh, small token of appreciation thank you so much thank you so much with this uh, we move to another important speaker of the inaugural session we have with us uh, dr k madan gopal senior consultant of health of niti ayog government of india we welcome dr madan gopal he is joining us virtually from delhi office uh, we are now all used to the new normal the rules of new normal where we talk about hybrid mode of walking so we welcome dr k madan gopal uh, is he there with us over to you uh, dr k madan gopal for your special address dr madan gopal can you hear us yes yes now is uh, clear because uh, i don't know what is okay. happening see you again uh, over to you sir for your thoughts on the sustainable healthcare uh, approach what are the focus areas what are the thinking of niti ayog in terms of building that sustainable and efficient healthcare ecosystem over to you sir thank you uh, thank you very much these are my personal uh, observations uh, not the view of the institution how it can influence the view of the institution in coming future so one of the important things which uh, first let me congratulate the government of doing the, such a nice work uh, the initiatives which were reflected in the presentation they were uh, they were music uh, to the ears that okay, what kind of efforts we can do when uh, when we are challenged to innovate and uh, do things in a, a different way we have seen how we have done things differently had it been a routine affair then uh, many things would have uh, taken many years to come to the light but now you have seen that how things have escalated how things have accelerated uh, and picked up pace and you are now seeing uh, many results but one of the challenges uh, we, we would be uh, seeing lot of efforts in seeing how the system is set up you are putting in finances how putting uh, uh, priority for the infrastructure development how we are trying to build capacities how we are trying to build a integrated uh, laboratory network so we are trying many things but one of the important challenges uh, which is how to nurture the human capital because in the covid times just the capital because we have too much relied on uh we thought that the private sector which was contributing to services would be coming forth during the first phase in the first phase on the with the during the first phase when we have witnessed institutions they closed down that we how to bring back the capital human capital to provide services when the unlock thing happens the same challenge remained the doctor was there but the other staff which was required they, as they have gone to the own places it was very difficult to bring back that person to work in that hospital in the private as well as the government now the other challenge which is thing after the covid uh, pandemic more or less we are in a sustenance phase now many of the play, at many of the places the human capital which were recruited for providing services now they have been us to move out and if this kind of trend happens we should see that okay, how we can utilize the human capital which was uh, which has supported us during that uh, difficult time uh, so we had that uh, problem but we have to see that okay, how we address this problem and issue the human capital is prime most important we do have vacancies in vacancies of for medical officer we do have vacancies of specialists and in during the covid time we have recruited many people now we have to see that how we properly utilize these people because they have been trained in uh, managing the emergencies uh, during this covid time and abruptly asking them to leave and uh, find out uh, other things we have to see that how we nurture this capital that's the important thing which we have to keep in mind while building a resilient system while lot of effort is happening which i have mentioned earlier uh, government has put in this uh, emergency response care package covid package is there then the 15 finance commission some funds are there and then to ascending the uh, disease surveillance system some efforts are going on 
we are building the integrated uh, disease surveillance laboratory that public health laboratory that is also coming up so much impetus is given for the development of infrastructure simultaneously all the states have been asked to build. we have been talking about the resilient health system uh, what is this resilience? Resilience is uh, the buffer capacity, capacity which is available, which can respond when the time arises. And system has uh, shown its buffer capacity and that it has shown a quite good resilience uh, during this COVID times. But we have to see as the need increases, as the emergencies increase, we have to see that how we push for sustaining the efforts made so far. The other important thing which we have learned during this COVID time is virtual care. Before the COVID, because it was an opportune moment for the care which has been provided. And you you will appreciate that uh, during the second phase, when the system was overwhelmed for two, three weeks, it was the home care uh, aided with the virtual care and the telemedicine guidelines, which has, which has Soon results uh, and you all can watch for that key, how the home care was a mainstay treatment during the okay uh, now it's a mainstay it has come because the virtual thing has enabled this thing we will be seeing more of the virtual care in the coming days and we see that key, how we improve the quality of this virtual care so that it it becomes more and more viable and a useful mode of uh, providing care uh, in the coming days as the Broadband and the internet uh, connectivity is increasing. You will be finding more of the space, more of the virtual case space in the coming years. Apart from that, the COVID has uh, at least uh, hit the private investments in the healthcare. This is another challenge: how to bring in more investments into the healthcare. So this is an area where it's very difficult to say and provide a proper uh, a proper solution or a ready-made solution for that. We're still grambling that how to bring in more investment. Whatever investments are happening, people are doing that. Uh, investments, particularly in the tier two and tier six cities, how we can incentivize the people. The government is having a VGF scheme, viability gap funding, but it's still evolving. We see that how it matures and bring in more investment into the we, we we do have we do promote the, the public private partnership for converting district hospitals to medical colleges. We are just hoping that that also is picked up and people they just see and come forward in doing the investments. Other avenues are also there for promoting this investment, but it's a challenge uh, to build the system around that. Compounded with this, uh, if we focus on the quality of the care in the private sector, the, uh, that's a, a very that, that would be a very very. Uh, that would be a way forward in the bringing in more quality of care in this place. Another important challenge, uh, a big challenge which uh, the healthcare is is uh, experiencing in the post uh, COVID, in the post pandemic period, is the digitalization of the health records. So we do have a digital mission, uh, Ashwan Bharat digital mission, wherein the the patient IDs are created, providers IDs are created, health facility IDs are created. But a long way to go to see that ki, how these IDs, they, they are used for generating electronic health records so that some intelligence and other, um, other uh, things can evolve from that. Despite all these challenges, there's a lot of hope. To address all this hope, we require collaborative, we require collaborative efforts, which we have demonstrated during this COVID times. We require collaborative efforts of all the government and the healthcare providers, healthcare ecosystem rather to say. That means all the providers, healthcare workers, diagnostics, as well as the academic institution, they should be coming together so that whatever crisis and whatever problems which we are, we can find the solutions. We have overcome the SARS, MERS. And we have seen that the worst days of COVID are behind us. So we have shifted from a curative approach to preventive approach, and this is the right time. You would appreciate that uh, we have come uh, during this period only, we have come up with the public health and management career guidelines. The problem is why this was required because the problem is in the public system if a medical officer joins 
a primary health center or a community health center the progression is more or less very limited he doesn't see that ki if he is a medical officer only mbbs can he become director of services or not if her anm is there at what level she can progress if a nurse joins well she can she become matron or she can become assistant director or the director of services or not if a asha worker is there what is the career progression of all this is been addressed we have to try to see that how this is addressed in the public health management cabinet the guidelines have been released together with the efforts made by the government with the focus on the human capital virtual care private investments and focus on digitalization as well as the scope for increasing how we can improve the virtual care these are all the things uh, in the coming days we, we, we will be seeing more of this so that we can uh, develop a more sustainable and equitable system i will stop here thank you very much my apologies for that the third Uh, thank you, thank you, Dr. K. Madan Gopal, Senior Consultant, Health Niti Aayog, Government of India, for uh, uh, sharing with us what are the challenges and how those challenges can be overcome uh, with the right uh, policy interventions from the government and in terms of building resilient and uh, uh, sustainable healthcare infrastructure. How digital interventions can help or uh, being uh, helpful for healthcare transformation in our country. Um, from not only entire one cities again he was also focusing on tier two tier three cities and again uh, digital infrastructure can play a vital role in that uh, we heard two perspectives uh, one from uh, kui dfc uh, i can say that's a government nc we heard uh, from we heard a perspective from the niti ayo and uh, let's have a perspective from the uh, hospital ecosystem if i, if I uh, say so uh, uh, we have with us shubhankar pramanik uh, Deputy CIO and Senior Director, Manipal Health Enterprises. A huge round of applause for him. If you can kindly come on stage and share your thoughts on building resilient and uh, sustainable healthcare infrastructure, working together. Over to you. Thank you. Very good morning. And say a beautiful rainy morning today, right? Yeah. Uh, I was amazed that uh, Karnataka government has taken uh, so beautiful steps for uh, healthcare ecosystems. And the pictures which I have seen, it's amazing, actually. In fact, uh, number of uh, states, uh, very few number of states uh, who have taken this kind of step. And obviously, Niti Aayog is the one uh, organization who is taking care of uh, all digital healthcare ecosystems for the country itself. The architecture, the platform, the policies, everything they are looking for and uh, what dr gopal uh, i think dr uh, k madan gopal has uh, already told that uh, our healthcare ecosystem is not the only hospitals and not on, not the only the pharmacy and all those things it's it's a complete it's a hospitals it's clinics it's uh, pharmacy it's transports uh, uh, between uh, the consumers as, so as the patients and the uh, next to the tertiary care hospitals, the insurance uh, body, the uh, 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 the payment mechanisms even, uh, the supply chain, uh, it's total ecosystems. So this ecosystem, some of the ecosystems has grow up uh, rapidly, like if I say that nowadays digital payment is the one of the biggest uh, achievements in India. So. Uh, Payment uh, assistance is now online. Everything is now online. So uh, one of the uh, component of the healthcare ecosystems is already there. And in COVID-19 uh, pandemic also uh, help us uh, to build uh, good supply chain mechanisms also. So that is also placed. Now the connectivity between uh, the consumers, uh, the patients per se, that remote area, to the uh, tertiary care hospitals is the most important things. And 
there are uh, certain uh, dependency there are certain fallout also like uh, uh, if you can it's a simple example if you can travel uh, across the bangalore city it's very tough to reach hospitals within uh, half an hour so uh, this kind of uh, things are there definitely but uh, yeah but uh, hospital per se uh, i came from technology background so uh, technology is there in each and every corner uh, of the digital healthcare ecosystems. Technology is available. The challenge is like uh, which technology you have to choose. And each and every uh, uh, product in the, uh, in the healthcare ecosystems uh, by different uh, startup companies, by different uh, uh, companies, they don't talk each other. It's very unlikely they talk each other. So uh, for from a technology leader to establish a technology ecosystems in the hospital yeah, healthcare ecosystems, it's very difficult to find that uh, this product will talk uh, that product also uh, seamlessly. So it's very challenging job for us also uh, to define the technology uh, architecture for the healthcare ecosystems. But uh, nevertheless, uh, we, we have a different choice. We have a different options also. Uh, and now uh, much more in stable mode. And uh, some government initiatives, uh, I should mention that uh, like uh, uh, Dr. Gopal already mentioned, like there are CR, uh, CSR initiatives, PEP models, PPP, triple P uh, models are there. E-Aragyo is there. Uh, virtual clinics are also there. So uh, I should uh, uh, stress only the PPP model, which is very much uh, uh, right uh, uh, to place in this forum that government should work with, uh, works with uh, private organizations very closely. Uh, otherwise, the skill set, the resource, uh, uh, which is the main problem in healthcare industry, is uh, uh, it's, it's impossible to establish the uh, uh, digital ecosystems, uh, digital healthcare ecosystems in state level, yeah, in country level. Uh, so they have to work with uh, uh, private uh, institutions very closely. And uh, another thing is like uh, the governance, the policies are not very strong enough uh, to handle, uh, handle uh, our patients uh, digitally. Still, it's uh, uh, growing, it's developing, but it is not very strong because, you know, the value of patient data, how much is nowadays. So from security aspects, from sharing aspects, uh, there are a lot of uh, risk already there. So as a complete uh, solution, uh, we should take care first the policy and the government structure, government structure uh, as well on the total healthcare ecosystems. So, uh, like uh, I uh, belongs to Manipal uh, uh, Healthcare Private Limited. So we have total almost 33 hospitals in in the in India. So uh, on those hospitals, uh, we have a different patient platform because when uh, gov when an organizations grow, they grow very rapidly and they uh, just uh, uh, take over different uh, kind of hospital chains also. So. Uh, like uh, if I give you examples in uh, uh, Bangalore itself, we have uh, nine hospitals. Out of nine hospitals, some of the Ars 12 uh, Columbia Asia units are there. Some of the Vikram hospitals are there. So uh, it's very difficult uh, to give you as a patient a seamless experience uh, 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 from the organization prospect. So uh, from healthcare, yeah, hospital prospect that we have to build uh, uh, seamless ecosystems uh, for the patients and first uh, and uh, their experience should be very good with uh, any any of the uh, any of our units when uh, he or she is approaching for uh, his care and one these things and second thing is how we are involved with them uh, digitally it's very tough because uh, in India uh, healthcare is not only the uh, care it's a kind of psychology it's kind of feelings uh, exchange between the consultant and the patients it's very uh, very touchy things uh, even uh, nowadays also there are a lot of people who until a uh, doctor is uh, just uh, consulting with him in person is not satisfied 
So uh, we have to take care when we are extending this uh, digital ecosystems to those patients, and we are we are we are handling their feelings. We are handling their psychology. So, like uh, we are experience uh, many times a very bad experience. Like uh, if we go for any teleconsultations kind of uh, a channel, and uh, we are waiting a long for the doctor. He is not giving you the time. So uh, it's it's very practical. If you reach any hospitals, you can wait for the doctor. You, you will not mind. But if you are paying through a digital channel and you are waiting for a consultation through any of the channel, like any WhatsApp channels, or any of the uh, uh, hospitals uh, uh, apps channel, you will be very much annoyed, and uh, you, you will not uh, because you are thinking that we have paid that doctor should available. This kind of psychology, uh, uh, first of all, we have to take care, uh, and how we have to handle a patient's on-prem, uh, we have to handle digital, uh, digitally that. So um, this is the small things, the small examples I have just given you. Um, so dealing with uh, healthcare ecosystems with the technology platform is very tough, uh, per se. And the uh, perfections of the output uh, by using the technology uh, in different medical equipments, in different uh, uh, diagnostic equipments also is very much required also. Still, uh, uh, there are a lot of uh, 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 research and development is going on from medical equipment sites also and from uh, interface between the healthcare ecosystems and your uh, diagnostic uh, tools and uh, uh, machines also um, digitally. Like uh, if I uh, if I implement uh, artificial intelligence in X-ray ultrasounds kind of uh, modality, uh, still we are not 100% perfect. Uh, that is also a, a concern for us. Uh, it's developing definitely. Uh, we are hoping that next uh, uh, few years by it will be a perfect uh, mechanisms that uh, a simple ultrasound, simple X-ray can be viewed uh, by artificial uh, intelligence. And uh, if you upload your uh, X-ray on the portal, it will be automatically tell you that what is your disease and where is your disease. So this kind of things so we are uh, uh, implementing in healthcare. So technology sites, I must say that uh, there is a lot of technology available in the market. But we have to be very uh, careful that what we are using for and is it accepted by the consumer itself. So this is the one thing and uh, last but not the least thing is like uh, you have to understand the ecosystems, whole, whole ecosystems uh, from patient's perspective. Like if you raise any query for suppose uh, being a patient, I am asking for a good cardiologist in uh, uh, in Bangalore itself. So are we uh, giving, are we pushing someone as a good cardiologist from apps point? That is also a responsibility for any organizations and that not for the business perspective, but uh, we have to take care that uh, that fertility, that uh, consultant uh, should be uh, uh, capable enough to handle those kind of disease also. So we should be responsible enough to promote any technology uh, uh, digitally uh, from the uh, private uh, entrepreneurship. So this is the things I uh, wanted to share with you. And rest of the things already told and what is going on in Karnataka, what, is, uh, what are the initiatives has been taken in the Niti Aayog. Uh, we have to sync with those uh, uh, initiatives. Uh, from uh, Manipal sites, it is we are already participated in Aishman Bharat uh, uh, and policy framework uh, uh, initiatives, and uh, I am personally uh, involved with uh, like uh, to make the policy to prepare the policy in the uh, Aishman Bharat also and uh, uh, structural uh, architecture. I am personally involved with them and. Uh, this is uh, a kind of commitment from the uh, private uh, partnership. So that's all from my side. And uh, thank you uh, for giving me this opportunity. Thanks, uh, Shubhankar Pramanik, Deputy CIO and Senior Director, Manipal Health Enterprises. Uh, you have touched base upon various important issues. Uh, uh, 
also about the digital infrastructure architecture, but very important part you have said when you said that uh, government should work more with private players uh, to to uh, to establish digital infrastructure in the state level. I think uh, that has been one of the very important point raised by you and sure the uh, government officials sitting here, industry uh, leaders sitting here uh, are listening to you. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. But before you go, we just want to give a small token of appreciation to you. Can we have the bouquet on stage, please? Not bouquet, the plant, sorry. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, as I was saying that we had various perspectives from the government, uh, from the hospital ecosystem, uh, from the think tanks, uh, official think tanks of government of India, less of a perspective from the industry. And we have the eminent industry leader with us uh, from the healthcare segment. Let me invite Mr. Amit Mishra, segment head, healthcare, greater India, Schneider Electric, who will be sharing some thoughts on how Schneider is helping uh, the healthcare infrastructure transformation in various states uh, and in various ecosystems as well. Over to you, Amit. A big round of applause for him, please. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, APAC team, our honorable dignitaries and esteemed delegates for giving us the opportunity to talk about sustainable healthcare infrastructure. So first, I would like to share some of the important facts about healthcare. Whether are we aware that uh, as a healthcare segment, how much it contributes on carbon? Let's say the carbon uh, footprints of healthcare sector. It's the fifth largest segment across the globe that contributing at 200, uh, giga, uh, 200 uh, gigawatt of carbon as well as the fifth largest contributor. So it means healthcare is also one of the biggest emitter of uh, carbon. The second one, the important point of the healthcare industry, the healthcare is one of the second largest complex building after nuclear power plant. There are so many things comes under healthcare facility that various speakers have also highlighted that fact. So we'll start our discussion with why healthcare. If you talk about the stakes of life, that in healthcare, it's very high. We are talking about one in 300. Even in the aviation industries, the risk is one in three million. So we are talking about the life, the life of humans. Building the infrastructure of the hospital, uh, it's, it's one of the part wherever we talk about the technology, innovation, digitization, and so many things. But running of the hospital or the government infrastructure or private inf infrastructure, the major challenge comes with operational of operational issues or the efficiency of the hospital. So we have a very good references of Medicare hospital at US that they have saved 28 billion US dollar in last five years. With the, with the advancement of the technology, innovative product uh, and the connection with various different protocols, with the help of HL7 network that, that will communicate with HIS, ADTS system, which is the backbone of healthcare system infrastructure. So we need to work more on the operational efficiency of the hospital if, if we are building new and new hospital on 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 um, uh, on regular basis. Because as a government of India, they have announced more than 600 medical college and hospital are coming up by 2025. So it's a huge responsibility on our shoulder that how we are building more resilient. Second part, second part, which is also very much demanding if you talk about electrical consumption. So we are talking about that uh, by 2040, that electrical consumption will be doubled. So in India, they, in, uh, the, if you talk about the energy consumption of India as a country, we are talking about 400 gigawatt. And more than 120 gigawatts are coming from the renewable side. That's a mission and vision of our honorable Prime Minister Modi ji. So basically now the second and the prime responsibility comes to us, how we'll make it more resilient, how we'll make it more sustainable. So 100% uptime, that's the priority for, for the healthcare event. So we have N number of sustainable solutions that will integrate with renewable solutions along with different energy resources so that it will make it more uh, effective. So high demand of electricity, the second biggest revolution is digitization. 
so in digitization we are talking about eight numbers more devices and in current year by 2020 that we have 30 billion connected devices and we are talking about eight times more devices in upcoming years by 2025 it means we are talking about more electrical more digital and we need to be prepared for such kind of energy landscape from day one if you talk about the healthcare, healthcare as a segment, why, why government and private both are talking about so much about infrastructure? Because by year 2050, that 65 plus population expected to be double. So we are talking about 1.5 billion population needed the hospitals infrastructure. So we need to be ready from the infrastructure part. Second, that uh, Suvankar has highlighted the threat if you talk about the digitization, if you talk about the complete ecosystem of uh, mechanical, electrical, IT integration, biomedical, everything. So there are lots of cyber security threats are required. More than 75% of healthcare organizations worldwide have experienced cyber attacks. Even some of the very renowned hospital in India like Hiranandani CEO have admitted this fact in, in Schneider platform, one of the series. Some of the very renowned hospital based out of Bangalore, they also admitted this fact of cybersecurity, which is very common. So now this is the high time to talk about digitization as well as a security perspective. Third one is patient-centric care. Whenever we talk about patient-centric, uh, the landmark project is AIMS, if you talk about AIMS Delhi. They are coming a big infrastructure plan, more than 20,000 crore investment has planned for AIMS Delhi. And their first priority is patient care. How will give this complete empowerment to the patient and the O&M facility maintenance guy so that they can maintain those system. And, and provide the shortage, the second biggest threat for healthcare industry, that shortage of healthcare workers, that it has to be protected by, by 2035 that shortage will be 13 million. It means that it, it's the right time that government is spending huge amount of money on the medical college infrastructure so that it helps to be communicated more and more medical practitioner will come into the field and that they will support us. And last but not the least that uh, net zero emissions. So our uh, country has already taken the pledge by 2070, India will become as a carbon neutral country. And, and healthcare have a bigger responsibility if you talk about sustainability that we already talked on, how, how healthcare infrastructure is impacting uh, the overall environment. As a Schneider Electric EcoStructure partner, whenever we talk about IoT enable interoperable platform, it's, it's, it's the responsibility of Schneider. So basically we started our journey from the initial design phase the designing of the infrastructure, where it's, it's very much complex. In, in complex city, that Schneider Electric various solution like ETAP, which will help the system more, your, your electrical design, your simulation will be much more easy because at the time of, during the pandemic, we all have witnessed how hospital infrastructure have uh, actually accommodated 400, 500, 1,000 patients into only 200 bedded hospital. So that's the high time how we are using those technology. The second biggest challenge in healthcare industry that uh, develop any of the hospital in, in a specific timeline. So for a specific timeline, that construction of the hospital, that Schneider have a beautiful solution on, on RIB. Basically, it's a BIM kind of technology which I, I would really uh, uh, appraise Manipal, who, who is coming up new hospital, then they are, they are the front leader of the technology. They are talking about BIM. Even our new Ames hospital, which is coming up in Delhi, they are also building the complete infrastructure on the BIM technology so that they will also predict the time, the cost of the infrastructure, whether the project must be delayed, what's the cost implication? What's the price, even the time implication? so that ultimately it, it will not affect the future of, of uh, the infrastructure part. And last but not the least, that we are the front runner for operate and maintenance phase. The Schneider is known for the technology of electrical, mechanical, as well as the IT part. So we have N number of software that Aviva is the one of the company that uh, 
in Sikkim, Namchi city, that's a complete automated a smart city that Schneider have done all the automation in case of uh, a smart healthcare system. The ambulance uh, transportation IT system, which uh, Mr. Srinivas have just highlighted for Bangalore, even uh, the complete uh, blood infusion system, all the HIS, ADTS system, all are working with the basis of the technology. So we have developed command and control center for them, for, for Sikkim as a, a smart city concept. Next, I would like to share some of the global insight. What would be the future of healthcare industry? So healthcare future, it, it basically a patient experience. Now Apollo is talking about much more on, on uh, the integration part or the customer interaction, customer experiences part. So the, even the global survey which we have done for, for the, uh, and the result is very much surprising that 55% uh, patient have admitted the fact that it, the system, it has to be more interactive. And the second part is lighting level, like they have a major issues with the uh, lighting level, noise level, thermal comfort, for patients, so how will make it more a smart integrated system for the patient so that he will control their light, blind, curtain, even Alexa communicated. Most of the time the patient are, are suffering from the cooling or the thermal effect. So how will you give this empowerment to the patient? So we have a ready-made solution for, for those that we will develop the ecosystem for the patient in case of the patient experience. They are the major challenges. Second major challenge is if you are talking about the human centric hospitals. So first one is patient, clinician and, and administration. How are you giving this empowerment to the patient to control these things for inside the room or the patient experience? The second part is clinician. The major challenges comes that they, will, they are not getting the right information at the right time so that they will prepare their rooms, they will automatically, when patient enter into the hospital, automatically those data will capture, room will be prepared based on the temperature, pressure, and humidity. The third part is even it will be effective for the administration that we are doing multiple hospital in India. The third basic need for the hyper-efficiency, whenever we talk about running of the hospital, the major challenges come for operational efficiency. Why? Mr. Srinivas have highlighted the very important fact that whatever the new investment is coming up in, in Karnataka region, all are coming up with BMS technology. Why? Because 27,000 IO point that you, you need to control, you need to monitor within five minutes of time because it's a case of human, it's a life or death case. And, and as a healthcare, we do not have time for downtime. So basically, if you're talking about 800 bedded or 1,000 bedded hospitals, you are going to control 3.5 thousand AHUs, HVAC. In such a case as that you are talking about 27,000 data information. So basically it's a data. Second part, it's, it's very challenging for facility and maintenance guys to manage those facility. In every operations, they require different temperature, different pressure and humidity. Whenever you will visit any of the existing hospital, the major challenge for those facilities to maintaining for gynae, they required 55 humidity. For pediatric, they required 23 temperature. For different surgery, they required 21. How they are managing? So with the basis of these smart technology, we are managing those things. And employee comfort and patient comfort improved a lot. More than 1.8 thousand complaints have been addressed within a minute with the basis of those technology and integrated solutions. And automatically it's saving the cost. And whenever we talk about the, uh, this CapEx part or the challenges, the first challenge is high energy demand because hospitals always run 24 by 7. And then the second part is no downtime. In most of the hospital that you have seen in a newspaper headline, in every 15 days, there is a complete blackout, which is very common. So how you will make your system more resilient in terms of the uh, new technology, adoption of technology and communication with the HL7 protocol, which is a, which is a, a basic backbone of healthcare industry. So with the help of uh, Schneider Electric solutions in case of the operational efficiency that we are 
basically providing those solutions and, and uh, for healthcare facility that we are saving the energy up to 30%. And, and this is the latest solution that we have deployed in Ames Delhi, that they have a major issues with regards to the fire infrastructure. So we have provided all uh, innovative connected product like thermal sensors, humidity sensors and installed. They are getting the insight, Schneider is the single company that we have more than 2000 data scientists and we have a global R&D center based out of Bangalore. They are doing all the research on the electrical part, mechanical data and predicting those information for more than any healthcare facilities. So that you will get all those real time alert and notification as an advance. If anything goes wrong on your transformer, you will get to know as an advance. If anything goes wrong on your HVAC, or in AHUs, you will get to know as an advance. That's the beauty of those solutions. And, and finally, it's saving the energy requirements. And, and uh, basically, we are helping those facility to make it more sustainable uh, with the help of LEED, GRIHA certifications, and giving some mileage point. Because, because whatever the product range we have, we have more than 1 million product range, and all are communication capable. They are giving some mileage point if you are going for LEED and GRIHA certification. Because again, government is coming up a new guideline for healthcare industry that it has to be green hospital. It has to be LEED certified hospitals. And the new, in the, so by this way that we are helping this all healthcare facility, how it will work, how will make it more resilient, more sustainable. So basically we are talking about paperless. First concept will start by the edge layer softwares like ETAP, RIB, Planon. With the integration of those software and the different silo system. In healthcare industry, more than 27 different system it has to be integrated. What Mr. Uh, Suvankar has highlighted, the more complex part for, for healthcare industry. So connecting of those different silos or, or systems to make it as more ecosystem for one uniform communication network so that we will all analyze your HVAC, hydraulic system, medical devices system, or backup power system so that will will give some uh, some predictive result as an advance so that uh, uh, our facility maintenance guys, our ONM will take some actionable insight. This is the beauty of the complete resiliency and the sustainable solution. And, and for all across, if you talk about how it will benefit to those uh, you know, investor or, or from the government agency or from the private agency, so we are talking about pupil safety. Pupil safety and, and the 33% less comfort, uh, less complaint on the thermal part, which is a basic need. If you, go, if you will visit northern part of India or the western part of India, the major challenge is thermal comfort. So with the integration of those technology and the edge layer solutions, that's helping you for less, uh, less complaint on the pupil safety part. Second one is hyper efficiency. So with the basis of those technology that you are reducing the unscheduled maintenance. And even, even in AIMS, that earlier they have more than 400 maintenance guys, now it got reduced to 160. So that's the beauty of the complete ecosystem. Resiliency, that of course 32% uh, database analytics has started and they are yielding the result for downtime and sustainability. That's our topmost priority for the healthcare industry. So that's all thank you so much for patient sharing with me and we have a uh, we have a complete demo for uh, healthcare solutions so i would request please spend some time on on the uh, healthcare how healthcare is smart infrastructure will work thank you so much uh, thanks uh, that was mr amit mishra segment head healthcare greater india schneider electric and we have not only given the best practices, which is being leveraged by Schneider in various hospitals uh, across the globe, but also uh, talked about the vision, uh, how the new uh, age technology is helping uh, building that sustainable and uh, efficient healthcare infrastructure where 
a uh, lot of focus is given to technology ana analytics and newest technologies thank you so much uh, amit for sharing your thoughts uh, but because uh, before i let you go we have a small token of appreciation can we have the plant on the stage please uh as we all know that we are running little short of time so we won't uh, break for any uh, tea break or something like that can be served inside the hall so let's move to the next session and again uh, this session we focusing on the uh, resilient and sustainable aspect of uh, healthcare infrastructure and again we have mix of uh, government industry and the hospital ecosystem together for this session we have with us mr prasanna venkatesh consultant in the office of the chief engineer uh, healthcare Health and Family Welfare Department, Government of uh, Karnataka. Can we invite Mr. Prasanna Venkatesh to come on stage, please, and share his thoughts on building resilient and sustainable healthcare infrastructure? A huge round of applause for him, please. Oh, thank you. Well, good morning. Uh, well, I am I am going to run through uh, the the department we present. the department of engineering health and family welfare being of government of karnataka um my name is prasanna as uh, yes introduced um, i am a hospital engineer uh, alumni of cmc valor well um, i i am representing mr manjappa who is held up uh, he is the chief engineer of the uh, the health and family welfare department engineering wing right uh, so let me start with this the engineering wing of healthcare department has got two departments with it one is the healthcare wing the health and family welfare department which uh, builds the hospital like primary healthcare centers the anm sub centers taluk level hospital district level hospital and another one which is the medical education department which builds all the medical uh, college and hospitals right this is the uh, we will be talking about the healthcare infrastructure the sustainable healthcare is all about the sustainable infrastructure as the infrastructure is sustainable and the system is perfect and things like that and then the efficiency increases and it at, at the end of the day it all boils down to money and the operational cost and the running expenditure so as we built any in healthcare infrastructure when we think of an infrastructure which has got an optimal and a perfect and efficient system then it's it becomes a perfect sustainable healthcare system right well uh, i will be running through the department how it started up initially this healthcare in the government setup was a uh, fort of uh, the pwd department used to build the hospital healthcare systems and over a period of time then this healthcare pwd department were just building up a shell and a hospital and the doctors used to equip and things like that and there was a uh, much of uh, uh, not a coordination which was not happening and then with the world bank uh world bank assistance it has become khsrdp that is karnataka health system development and reform project and then later then you know this uh, khsrdp started uh, making all the healthcare systems and it was uh, it it's it has made to increase the efficiency of the healthcare system and curative and preventive healthcare system right in later in the year in 2017 the engineering wing was officially a part of the health and family welfare department uh, that comes under the directorate and it was a separate engineering wing then from 2017 all the systems all the hospital all the healthcare systems which has come are are all with the full of integration with the healthcare system and the engineering service together so we are right now building an hospital which is got the total integration which which was before the pwd department were doing it was just an infrastructure and there was no marriage was happening right now it is all married and it's perfectly working well right uh, let me run through a small thing like you know how the structure of engineering service works the engineering department and health and family welfare department runs the primary healthcare centers uh, and the anm sub centers the primary healthcare centers are just around six bedded small hospital which is on the remote village and then this anm sub centers the anm sub centers are still a remote place where that you know a nurse 
and she take care of the small community and then she refers to the primary health care centers once the system if the patient uh, gets a little more worse and things like that from the primary health care center and then the patient if it requires a more of thing then it is referred to a community health care center and then to the taluk level hospital it just keeps on moving based on the requirement of the patient so we have all this infrastructure which is all done by the health and family welfare department that is an engineering wing and we also do this allied facilities like the uh, uh, the drug logistics departments where that we store vaccination and things like that and we do all this uh, uh, vaccination storage centers which is all across every taluks and based on the need and in the health medication um, medical education wing we uh, right now as per the nmc norms we are the most of the district level hospital gets converted into a medical college in medical college hospital the primary need is initially to start up they require around 450 bed hospital which a teaching hospital is built and then it gets integrated and it becomes 750 bed hospital at the end of the 5 years so we also build that and the multi specialties hospital right now we have kidwai and jaydava which is perfectly functioning well and things like that so we are just duplicating this um, kidwai centers and jaydeva centers across the state one of the jaydeva center is at mysore that we have cloned the thing there and so it is also start it is about to start and couple of things over the period of time i'll just explain you and all the medical institutions uh, it is all just made as per the niti ayog and I mean, not niti ayog this nmc national medical council and mca guidelines and we do some more the allied facilities for the medical colleges but something like a super specialty centers like gastroenterology center urology centers and things like that right this is the organization how it works and the department of engineering service of the health and family welfare wing works at the head um, in the leadership of a chief engineer we have mr manjappa who is professor manjappa he was uh, a professor before that he did his uh, kes and he is heading the department a medicalist man and uh, we have a deputy chief engineer in the office of uh, the chief engineer and we have technical assistants and uh, we have a few of our uh, consultants like architectural consultant electrical consultant i am a biomedical engineer who works in the office of uh, chief engineers and followed by that the whole of the state is divided into four divisions we have four executive engineers who is managing the four divisions and all the people down the line like we have assistant executive engineers and assistant engineers who man the whole show and the thing is the government system has got all the systems which is like it's all uh, like a supervisory thing most of the things is all done by the contractors and things like that so coming to the next slide uh, what is that we have did all this while right we have around 8871 uh, up to 2022 we have anm sub, sub centers which is 8871 and we don't have anything ongoing this is saturated and the primary health care centers is around 2559 and, and the community health care centers to to not seven and taluk level hospital around 146 taluk level hospital and this has got a weird speciality like you know when there is a primary health care center when as the population grows and the area grows up and the medical requirement grows more and so it gets automatically upgraded to a community care center once this community health care center is almost around 30 bedded hospital health care facility where it has got a couple of operation theaters it has got a small uh, inpatient area laboratory and things like that and then if as the population of that community area grows up and then it is designated to a taluk level and so you will taluk level hospital ideally will have around 100 bed hospital which will have around 2 3, 3 operation theaters and so on the lab radiology systems diagnostics everything and then we have one more thing also there are certain taluk level hospital which has got both this metal uh, maternal and child health together and certain taluk level hospital depending on the load we have a separate uh, maternal and child center and the next is the district hospital we have around 19 district hospitals across the state most of this district hospitals totally we have around 30 and most of the district hospital have been converted into a medical college hospital so right now it is all medical college hospital then once it achieves this 750 mark which is the requirement of the government uh, medical colleges and then we build another district hospital for that place right 
and we have trauma center as uh, mr shrinivasan was saying that uh, the trauma center which we are building at uh, the the ku idfc and the engineering department does the infrastructure part and they are the, the based on their requirement we just make it. and one trauma center which is going to come up in tumkuru and which is almost at a verge of completion and we have a critical care blocks which is going to come this is a part an initiative of uh, pm abhi which is a new scheme where that you know we are just going to have a critical care block which will have almost around 50 to 100 uh, in the system so you know in that in that this icu block will work as a stand alone system where in case of a pandemic the with our recent experiences what we have started to understand is like you know when the pandemic or something of this sort comes in the whole of the hospital become a covid ward or a covid whatever it is based on that particular disease so we don't have anything for uh, the other uh, people who have some other ailments so that doesn't happen so what we are trying to do is we are just trying to confine the whole of this pandemic people into this 50 and 100 bed configuration centers and then the rest of hospital will remain working as the normal right and we are going to have a integrated public health labs which all most of the district hospitals across the state will have a integrated public health system this the integrated public health labs will work on a hub and spoke model wherein the, it will all the spokes will be all the taluk hospital and the primary health care centers the the hub the integrated uh, public health labs which is in the district will as a act as a referral lab from the taluk level hospital the patient uh, you know as an as a diagnostic requires from the taluk level hospital the sample is sent to the um, the from that is we uh, designated as the the taluk level hospital as bp hus that is block public health health level laboratories so from there the sample is sent and so it is both are integrated to a uh, through this uh, software which is an proprietary software government and the, which is again a linux compliant most of the systems what we are right now procuring and start doing it is all as per the standards which is as per the international standard and the present existing standards so this is about the healthcare uh, of the health and family welfare department next slide is like you know this is a teaching hospital like you know the medical education also we do hospitals there are around 19 hospital which is four are on pipeline so we have four hospital which is getting built and we have two super specialty hospital which is in bangalore and one more in mysore and so we have another five coming up and uh, peripheral cancer centers we have uh, we are going to have three more across the state and peripheral contact centers we have already three uh, which is a cloned version of jaydeva right and uh, during this pandemic covid um, we had a big time initially uh, maintaining this whole of the system to uh, to manage this uh, pandemic situation where that you know during the first and second wave initially first bed there was an oxygen which was a scarce commodity and we started having pipelines infrastructure over and over. Um, i mean in this first and second wave on the health and family welfare department has increased around 1121 oxygenated beds have been created and in the medical education we have gen we have created around 6083 beds across the state and right now in the process of development that we have got around 7051 beds which is ongoing and the process is going on and so we will be having it in a couple of months from now and the medical education we have got another 510 beds which is going to get added up and after that you know there was in the wave 2 when we have seen it there was an acute demand of icus icus was a biggest scarce commodity in the wave 2 so right now every taluk level hospital almost have got a 20 bed icu and we have around 3191 icu beds across the state which is right now developed almost and in the medical education de education department we have another 930 beds and so in the whole process the whole of medical gas system the icu the medical gas system the compressor plants all this stuff have started growing up and the capacity have increased and so in the process initially we had got around 1 kl tank which was there and right now in the wave 1 and 2 we have increased I mean we have just uh, procured around 11 tanks which was installed 
and then it was around some 16 tanks which was added up to the taluk level hospital which is around 6 scale 6 kiloliters 1 liter of liquid oxygen gives around 890 liters of gaseous oxygen so we have that sort of a capacity and right now we are in the new system that you know a uh, new initiative which we called as ecrp emergency covid response program we have added up 135 six scale tanks across all the taluk level hospitals all the taluk level hospitals have will have a six scale tank which is three times of their requirement so this we are trying to create an infrastructure where that you know if it is going to become a massive pandemic pandemic whatsoever the situation we will be able to handle it we have considered around three times of the capacity and we will be having around 13 kl tanks we during the covid 1 and 2 we had two tanks and in the new initiative we will be having around 19 tanks and we had one 20 kl tank which is in hasan um the horizontal one um which one 20 kl and apart from this we have got oxygen generators across all the state, i mean all the districts and taluk level and that is around 243 number of oxygen generation plants have been installed across wherein the 40 numbers of oxygen generation plant which is about uh, 500 liters per minute was is installed across the state uh, which is state sponsored and 50 is been given by the pm uh, cares and the rest is all from the uh, csr activity which has been installed across the state out of this oxygen plants we will be able to generate around 187 metric ton of oxygen uh, per day all across the state and the lmo storage capacity to now after installing this many numbers of 6 kl and 13 kl we will be having around 1000 379 metric ton of liquid oxygen storage capacity which is three times right and coming to the next point is like you know what is our what is the role of all this stuff you know we have built hospital we just continuously went on improving as any i mean as the uh, the whole of the world improves and we have also improved over a period of time and we have provided a sustainable healthcare the sustainable healthcare right now i just wanted to stress about about this thing uh, the at the end of the day when we are talking about a sustainable healthcare it just boils down to the operation cost and how it works and it boils down to the number the sustainable healthcare requires to be a sustainable model energy efficient system so the sustainable model most of the hospital right now we follow a green system where that you know we have adopted a technology and we have got adopted a methodology where that to use the maximum amount of daylight and we have given a proper ventilation system where depending upon the air movements of that particular area we have given importance to that so that you know it gets a natural ventilation system and more of a green hospital and eco friendly system where you know to reduce the usage of power maximum ac usage are reduced and so that it has a natural ventilation system and a light and we have prepared for any of the most of the disaster the design is designed such so it has got a system where that you know you have a designated place for all this management and during this whole of a covid uh, teachings what we have got we have started designing systems accordingly and most of the healthcare systems are elderly and disabled friendly like you know all the hospitals which we are building right now are all elder elderly friendly and disabled friendly we have ramps we have got no and all everywhere you can crawl in with your wheelchairs and things like that and you know apart from this all the buildings are made in a high standards and a most efficiently and innovative methodology most of the innovations what is up to date technology has been adopted with our system and apart from this the independent movement like you know um, if the patient comes into the opd the flows the flow the flow is the important factor which in most of the healthcare industries is been developing over a period of time so this uh, the flow the flow like if the patient comes to the er then where he goes how it goes how the segregation happens zoning happens all these stuff are all taken care with our new uh, designs which is for the government system and uh, the patient the clinical areas non clinical areas are properly segregated there is no mismatch there is no cross connections all these stuff are taken care the flow easy flow and efficient manner and apart from this we have 
we are following the, all the possible standards. We are all, most of the government system and the government infrastructure is all guided by an IPH system, Indian public health care system. The Indian public health care system is reviewed right now and we have got all most of the provisions. It is at par with the international standards. Say like even we have a provision of a birthing pool. We have a provision. Most of the hospital, if the state wants it, and they will be able to have a birthing pool uh, inside their system. So uh, we maintain the standards. Most of the flows and uh, the bidirectional flows, unidirectional flows, which is required for ICUs, operation theaters, and the unidirectional flows in the operation theaters, how the clean and the zoning, uh, zoning in terms of uh, the infections management, things like the semesterial zone, all are taken care in this. So we, it is not that it has been done right now. We have been following it up and we have improved. And with this standard, we have still improved and we are right now changing the infrastructure. And apart from this, we follow, if when we are to uh, make a medical college, we are supposed to follow certain standards. That is, we follow the MCA guidelines, which is right now become an NMC. And apart from this, on all the safety precautions, we follow this NBC, National Building Code. All the government hospitals are all absolutely compliant. We are absolutely compliant to the National Building Code and the AC systems, as you know, um, the previous speakers were talking about the uh, the AHUs and things like that. The AHUs, all the air changes requirement and the fresh air requirements are all based on the uh, ASHRAE guidelines and the HTM guidelines. We are at par. We, we follow most our buildings right now complies to standards. All the medical care systems are all compliant to HTM 0201. That's the latest available standard. We follow it. And so all our pipelines, color coatings, the, uh, the copper pipelines, the copper pipe, uh, chemical ingredients, capacity, everything is based on that. And apart from this, the Indian electricity rules. And we have, we are, we are following a stringent uh, measures to see that we are compliant to the IER system. The IER, whatever the requirements say, like right from the transformer to the end, to the way the patient end, we have taken care apart from the thing and all these stuffs are taken care. And in the whole, we are to make a system where that it is of a minimal maintenance and a perfect system where it can last and the sustainable system. Apart to come more, more about this thing, we are also right now having a latest technologies like, you know, um, we are just planning to have the whole of an oxygen generation plant, which will be working on a solar system. We are right now planning with Google at Google Pet, where the whole of the OG, OGP plant, this oxygen generated plant of around 500 LPM will be working on a solar plant. We are working on to it. So in the whole process, there are quite a few primary healthcare systems, which is in Belgaum, Darwad and the remote areas has got the solar panels and the power generated by them is utilized by them and excess power is sent to the grid. So this is the model with the CSR activity we are working. And even in Tumukuru Smart City, um, the hospital will have a solar plant where the solar plant power generated by the solar will be utilized by the hospital and over and above that, it will be given to the grid. And if there is a requirement, taken from the Viscon. So that's how the system that we have been developing and we are taking about the light, which the light, most of the lighting system in the hospital across the government built hospitals are all absolutely compliant to the ANSI standards. The, the optimal and efficient requirement of the hospital, the healthcare industry is like a patient area, uh, ICU area, and operation data. It is all as per the ANSI standards. And per square feet lumens are all maintained. And that too, most of the lighting systems, what we followed is our energy efficient system, which is at par with the market, which we have been using it. And all our government hospital have got IPTVs, CCTVs, uh, nurse call system, and we are also proposing for having a pneumatic system, pneumatic air system shoots where that, you know, um, which will reduce the manpower and easy sample uh, transport, things like that. And apart from this medical gas pipeline, which is right now a big thing, which we have learned a lot over a COVID-1-2 and things like that. And so we have embraced all the maximum possible uh, technology advancement into this. We have incorporated like medical gas alarm system, um, the concentration analysis, all this stuff are in place right now. If you can 
visit any of the taluk level hospital we have most of the hospital which has got all the systems in place and apart from this we have got pr sensors and which is all which is all essential and which is all connected and apart from this we have come up with this hub and spoke model of having a tele icu facility which is with the csr uh, collaboration we have developed the icus with iptv cameras and all the monitors are getting integrated and it comes to a command center and we start the mysur uh, is shortly to come up and the system is on the system is fully installed and it's ready for commissioning and the tests are going on right and apart from this the efficiency of the healthcare system like you know as i've been telling you over the efficiency the overall efficiency of the system is reducing the operational cost and trying to get the maximum efficiency that we are working and we have enumerated and their referral mechanism so the referral mechanism most of the hospital right now most of the systems which we adopt with the government system is all hub and spoke system where that you know um, from the primary healthcare center to the district level hospital how the process keeps on getting escalated and most of the primary healthcare system hospital have got operation theaters and it has got a doctor i i was astonished and i had been to a place uh, a remote village of raichu taluk i mean raichu district and which i was amazed to see that there is around 45 pregnancies happen in that primary healthcare center if that similar doctor is in any of the private hospital here he would have been a most celebrated doctor and he is doing <laughs> so much there and one doctor with a handful of nurses and he has got a tele uh, consultation facility and he has he has been connected to a medical college where he gets all the inputs and whatever that is there it's working and we are prepared for any disaster any emergencies right now we have a program which is we are we have got a, a small blueprint where all the highways will have a trauma center every 50 kilometers of a trauma uh, highway will have a trauma center and so this critical care blocks and you have a district hospital we will become a biggest player right and it's a repetitive slide so to show you some of our uh, work and this is the icu this is the icu which you can see in any of the district level hospital we have got all the flooring we have got negative pressure positive pressure systems around uh, the the air changes requirement as per the norms and we have lighting we have headboard panel and we have got uh, unidirectional flow and the infection control mechanism which is on place and no much of lot of trabeculations and no crevices and it's all seamless and all the operation theaters are most of the operation theaters are modular and we have got uh, hepa filters we have got a laminar air flow and and we have got around 20 to 25% of fresh air pumping in so that the we even have gone to an extent of understanding how an anesthesia gas is exhausted out in most of our system when um, i passed out in 2000 uh, this uh, this anesthesia gas scavenging system was uh, active system which was uh, started and so we are right now using this anesthesia gas scavenging system which is uh, integrated with the hvac system which has been right now practiced and we have got all the system in this place uh, in the place and so that you know the future of the healthcare in the healthcare system of the government mechanism will keep on having all this technology adopted this is the icu which is in jainagar which is a pediatric icu we have got everything like you know we have uh, created a situation where that this whole system um, is has got to uh, pediatric icu so we just don't want to give them a feel of uh, icu for the kids sick kids so we have made enough uh, system and uh, this is our yeah this is our six scale tank and this is a top view and uh, this is our all our uh, oxygen generation plants this is a vsa technology system uh, the power efficiency is around two times of the regular psa system this is called as vsa um, uh, our manifold system oxygen system this is a famous flagship which has been built atal bihari uh, hospital lady curzon hospital which is right now atal bihari vajpayee institute of medical science and uh, this is our uh, sorry uh, this is a girls institute i mean uh, girls hostel uh, 300 bedded hospital at belgavi and this is an endocrinology system 
uh, which when you pass through the CMH road and near the CV Ramanagar hospital, you can see this Institute of Endocrinology at Indranagar. And this is the interior. This is how it looks. And this is a super specialty hospital at Mysuru where the cardiac facility and 450, 450 bedded hospital facility at Chamaraj Nagar. And right now it is getting upgraded from medical uh, college to a medical college. This is Karwar which is on progress, which we will be having this Chikkamangalur. And Sanjay Gandhi, we are going, Sanjay Gandhi Institute, uh, we are going to have a robotics block, which uh, is shortly to be commissioned. 100 at Chikbalapur, we have this MHC, MC, MCH center, which will be 100 bedded, which will cater the needs of obstetrics, gynecology, and a pediatric care. Right, 100 Shikaripura at Shimoga. Uh, 100 bedded trauma center to Mukuru, uh, which we have all the solar, which we have made, we have taken as a care to the smaller detailing such so the system works with a hundred percent efficiency, right? Thank you so much. Jayan, you have any questions to ask? Something? Thanks, uh, Mr. Prasanna Venkatesh, uh, consultant uh, in the Office of Chief Engineer of uh, Health and Family Welfare Department, Engineering. I must first congratulate you, congratulate you, seeing the photo of that I see in the Tier Two city in a government hospital and the kind of uh, technological inter infrastructure in interventions you have made. That's quite remarkable. It didn't look like a government hospital, by the way. Uh, uh, thanks to your team. Yes, I think it, it, it deserves a round of applause for sure. Uh, and as you have rightly pointed out, the kind of work you have done in terms of sustainable healthcare system using green energy, high design standards, as you have mentioned, energy, emergency preparedness. Again, uh, if, it, it, if, if it happens, great that every 50 kilometer in highway, you have a trauma center. That's what you're planning. Again, again, a huge opportunity for industry to collaborate with you as well. And uh, your main aim is to uh, elevate the healthcare uh, to an efficient healthcare infrastructure. Thank you so much. But do sit back here because we have, a, we have another esteemed speakers with us for this uh, panel discussion. Uh, not panel discussion, but general discussion with presentation. So you can please take your seat and let me invite uh, Dr. Govind, Govindya Yathish, unit head, Apple Hospitals Bangalore to come on stage. Please, a huge round of applause for him. Uh, Ms. Manisha Kumar, COO and cluster head, HCG Hospitals to come on stage, please. And Mr. Vinod Kumar Muni, Director, Schneider Electric, to come on stage, please. A huge round of applause for all of them, please. Uh, let me invite Dr. Govindia Yathish for his thoughts on building resilient and sustainable healthcare infrastructure. Over to you, sir. You can come and speak from here. Okay, uh, I don't want to take uh, much of your time between the lunch and uh, uh, already it's, it's lunch time. Thing is, we all will be try to be crisp as uh, much as possible. Thing is, uh, since uh, my my topic was means the topic has been shared to all of us and we all know that what it is. Uh, so whatever sit and done as clinicians, we always look at like you know patient safety comes and the outcomes matters a lot. So are we going able to bring healthcare of international standards within the reach of everyone? Is what. Uh, I would say like, you know, on that purpose and the mission, like, you know, we are all uh, there. I would say like, you know, looking at uh, what uh, has been shared, like, you know, both by smart city and like, you know, the, the uh, top notch infrastructure has been built by the, uh, the, the team. See, end of the day, like, you know, what it is, are we building a good resilient communication system is all about like, you know, openness. Are we, are we keen to adopt for the change? And whether it whatever the mission hospitals, it can be a government hospital, it can be a social funded organization, it can be a trust hospital, or it can be profiteering business centers. Anyone need to continue to accomplish their mission, they need to make like, you know, some money to make it a self sustainable model. To create a self sustainable model, we need to provide affordability and we have all brought that affordable healthcare to India. And at the same time, like, you know, we, the entire world is looking at us because of the IT revolution is what is happening with whether it's respect to data structuring, productivity, or enabling uh, AI. 
see end of the day like you know are we keeping and adopting and moving chasing to the changes what's happening is most important yes we are that is what evident thing is we are not uh, complacent we are not running behind we are chasing and pushing each other and crossing boundaries the the this particular meeting where it is how it is healthcare and where is snider electricals and coming into the picture so that is the real real reflection of we are building a uh, resilient uh, safe uh, patient centric uh, organizations and we are all part of that foundation stone what we are all building in like no yes our predecessors have put in on that we are building and moving ahead thing is uh, see i don't want to talk too much like you know all of this discussions have happened like you know any part of the the talk and the queries like you know which we can we want to take it we can take it reason because i don't want to take much time yes whatever the data it is coming across it needs to be seamlessly moved from one platform to another platform whether it can be iot or remote or what we with called as uh, ai enabled uh, decision making system predictive system uh, and planning building efficiency means you whatever we we talk in, in with respect to management jagran to bring efficiency and productivity and uh, and self sustainability part of it like you know it is literally helping us out and enabling the data points what we are capturing at from the patient bed side to alarm monitoring to the clinical outcomes to the patient needs but end of the day i want to alert something like here by 2030 like you know whatever the healthcare need of the country of because of growing non communicable diseases it is immense all of us need to do anything we do it is still less we need to be move at a faster pace i think uh, i with that like you know i would like to definitely uh, end my things like you know i can take any questions or anything from any of my panel members thank you Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Govindia Yathish, uh, Unit Head Apple Hospitals, for sharing with us your thoughts. And, and uh, uh, I'm sure it was small, uh, just short and crisp, but very point uh, to the point. And the danger and the alert which you have used at, at the end, uh, I think we should uh, discuss about that more uh, in coming months and coming years or so. Uh, let's have a perspective from uh, Manisha Kumar, COO and Cluster Head of HCG Hospitals. Over to you, ma'am. Hi. Good afternoon. Uh, I think this is a very pertinent topic, and uh, really, COVID pandemic has shown us how important it is to have flexibility, resilience, as also and also scalability. Because in a matter of days, we had to cater to uh, approximately five to six times uh, the volumes and the footfalls that we were used to as hospitals. um now again uh, like dr govin said i don't want to be repeating so many things that previous speakers have already spoken but just in a nutshell i have worked in uh, in a lot of multi speciality hospitals currently with hcg where leaders in oncology so in in some and substance um when we are talking about sustainable resilience and uh, resilient and scalable infrastructure and healthcare first we talk about environmental sustainability in design and uh, these are some of the uh, uh, things that we have done in private hospitals i understand government has incorporated and is meeting a lot of guidelines and and uh, they're there with it uh, but uh, in private hospitals financial viability is very important so we have to keep a cost benefit analysis lens to everything that we do and uh, some of the things that we have done in our green field as well as brown field acquisitions the changes that we've made um you know using efficient lighting uh using uh you know renewable materials energy saving devices water treatment plants uh, water rain water harvesting etc for irrigation so really looking at utility cost and how i would draw a parallel and since coming from a private corporate hospital point of view again and again the bottom line is very important and where we have about 2 to 2 and a half percent of our expenses as utility expenses and this is where uh this is important from minimizing an operational cost point of view for us as well so of course environmental sustainability in a long haul way 
and 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 with the viewpoint of the next 10 to 20 years is very important but in the short frame of things scheme of things um, financial from a financial viability cost benefit analysis roi point of view also these help in reducing operational costs to a great extent so a lot of points that my previous speaker made uh, so many of them are common i'll talk more about it infrastructure here and i think a lot of our uh, private as well as probably the primary secondary government healthcare facilities they struggle a little bit with having uh, a strong backbone of IT infrastructure now we have a lot of uh, startups and I know our government is very closely and very keenly promoting startups it's all make in India now but uh, for any startup or application to work there is a strong uh, IT infrastructure um, you know, a lot of hygiene requirements in infrastructure that are needed. Just something as simple as bandwidth is needed because we have so many bandwidth intensive co connected devices that we are using anyways. So, you know, so that is very important and investing in healthcare infrastructure uh, is really the need of the hour. Anything smart that we do and any flexible, even other infrastructure that we want to make, we will need to use IT as a backbone. So I think this is really important. We have EHR, EMR systems. Most of our facilities use them, but they need to be customizable, again, flexible and scalable. Um, there are a lot of smart technology solutions. I think some of the people spoke about Hub and Spoke. That's how we treated so many more critical care patients during ICU. We made tele-ICU, we made step-down ICUs and so on. Um, using remote monitoring devices, central processing units, there's telemed. We all know what it is, but backbone of uh, IT infrastructure is very, very important. And the second aspect here is really skilling and change management. And I think that is where uh, us in corporate as well as government uh, organizations in healthcare delivery, we really need to focus on skilling our people. I think we do, uh, we have made uh, some headway in that, but really in terms of clinical staff, there is a lot of skilling that's needed. I always use the word change management because it's, it's not just training them, but also kind of getting their buying and convincing them and making them uh, you know believe in the value that it adds to their practice i think that is very important and we all know the ratios of doctors and nurses per, per thousand patients in india it is so skewed that a doctor would rather see five more patients than spend that much time in noting it down on a system but uh, this is the kind of change management that we need so that we are able to really empower ourselves our patients and our system with the data that we have because we are sitting really on a wealth of a massive wealth of data and lastly on scalability and connectedness i think uh, what we have seen during covid pandemic also with all the telemedicine that we've implemented so many companies that have come up is everybody is trying to give a single digital front door to patients for meeting all their uh, needs which can be met outside the hospital, which is all of their outpatient needs, starting from doctor consultations to, um, you know, uh, their records, reports, prescriptions. So pretty much all the touch points which can be taken out of the hospital uh, to post-discharge counseling, you know, home uh, care, rehabilitation and so on. So this is very important, giving a, a, a single digital front door. I think in terms of if we talk about scalability, definitely in primary, secondary uh, care to patients, in palliative care and, 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 and post-hospital care, this will go a long way. This makes it scalable and also uh, uh, gives us the massive uh, data um, that is useful. And uh, lastly, there is big data analytics, which is, uh, which is um, you know, the new item on the block, which is something that all of us are looking at. While we have all this data and now we're trying to capture it in the right um, uh, fashion on cloud on our servers and we have this wealth of data how do we internally analyze it how do we crystallize it and how do we make it actionable and how do we get actionable insights not just for diagnostics and patient care but also uh, from make, keeping continuity of care for making predictive models for predicting um, from right from disease profiling to you know the next interaction that the patient should have making 
every patient visit more meaningful to the hospital. So we have, you know, there are CRMs, there are us in HCG, we're actually working with one of the biggest uh, medical device companies to make uh, a smart radiology information system that uses both of AI and machine learning, uh, which is, you know, backed with big data analytics and is able to predict diagnosis. For example, uh, after the scan, we do not need a radiologist to contour the tumor looking at the image. The uh, contouring of the tumor can be done by the uh, radiology information system itself. Uh, that's the kind of intelligence it has. Therefore, it reduces the time to care, reduces our dependence on uh, you know, those many clinical resources and so on. So I think real scalability in in, in diagnostics and even in prognosis and, 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 and treatment of patients will come by using some of, some of these systems. Uh, lastly, I've talked again about cost-benefit analysis because really the D of the deal comes to who will pay for it. Uh, there are a lot of, uh, it's not just infrastructural investment, but a lot of smart solutions where there is a cost involved and not all solutions pay for themselves. Um, like so many people talked about hub and spoke. So if I talk about hub and spoke in ICU where we have a tele ICU, we have a central ICU that uh, monitors patients in step down facilities using remote monitoring devices and, and such cost of uh, solutions and devices um, is financially viable on its own because it, you know, instead of hiring more doctors and nurses, we are able to cater to more and more patients using the same set of resources. And therefore, this incremental cost is netted off in a matter of weeks. But not all solutions fund for themselves. And then there is a question of what, what um, you know, initiative the payers take, the government takes, the insurance companies take. Um, what kind of long-term vision private hospitals have to absorb this cost? Uh, do we see return in a five-year, 10-year uh, frame of time? And how much of it can directly be passed to the patient? Of course, that's not something any of us want to do. A lot of expenses are out of pocket. But uh, really, that is a question that all of us must ponder. And uh, that is pretty much the deal of the deal in investments in IT. Thank you. I'm open to questions. Thanks, Manisha, for sharing those insights with us. Uh, a very important point you have raised in your presentation, uh, one is the cost and its benefit is there, but uh, the skilling, skilling part in terms of uh, uh, upgrading the skilled workforce and also there is no dirt of data, but uh, how actionable that data we are making and how analytics is playing a huge part in that, that's more important. Thank you so much for those insights. Uh, we have with us uh, Mr. Vinod Kumar Muni, uh, Director of Schneider Electric. Uh, Vinod, if I may ask you that, what is your technology vision for future when it comes to building safe and resilient uh, healthcare infrastructure uh, through digitization? Your thoughts on that? You can speak from there or here, as you wish. So thank you so much. Uh, I mean, I could see the HCZ, the Apollo kind of an world, which is uh, cutting across this uh, healthcare industry to to end to end. Uh, when you come to Snyder, probably before the answer, I will try to touch this a little bit to what Snyder is actually cutting across to this industry itself. Uh, let me just surprise a few things about Snyder. When you look at the segments like uh, transportation as a segment, pharmacy as a, I mean, pharmaceutical as a segment, or healthcare as a segment, you talk about or we in, I mean, the aviation is a segment or CPG is a segment or triple W, triple M. Healthcare actually comes as a kind of a probably top two for us. Okay, and that's the way the investments is happening with respect to the infrastructure, with respect to the product, with respect to the software kind of a solution, what we can give it to all of you. So when I talk about software, the digitization has to be embedded inside. Now, when you look at any healthcare as an options as a kind of a facilities, I would like to ask a very simple question. How many of us actually not visited a hospital in the lifetime till today? Okay, so 730 crore populations, the statistics says that more than 15,000 crores of visits happens, 15,000 crores of visits happens every year to the hospitals. The sum total of your fortune, what you call the, the seventh wonder if you take it in the world, sum total of visits to the seventh wonder is actually not even half of the 15,000 crore visits which happens to hospitals. I mean, that's the statistics is all about. Now, what is the meaning of this to the side electric to us? The entry to the exit when you look at the any healthcare facilities, it requires a lot of kind of building management controls, your doctor facilities management, your patients management, and your infrastructure management you call about. 
So the entry to exit, whether it's a doctor's, it's a patient's or the machines itself, the Snyder has to play a big role in that. And this has to be controlled remotely. It has to be controlled locally as well. And any chain, which is like an Apollo or HCG or any of this wall, which is actually cutting across the life of the people. Today, it is not the private player which is actually taking the service of Snyder. It's a government which is coming up and working with the Snyder. And we are proud to actually partner the digital journey to make sure your, all your people, your patients and your machines and your infrastructure is been connected 24 by 7. And the safety plays a biggest role for all of us. And sustainability you talked about, I think I will define sustainability in a very simple words. If you have 100 rupee in your bank account in the end of the month, next end of the month, it should not be 99. Your income and expenses has to be so well managed, it has to be never go below 100. With this logic, when you look at it, the kind of fun consumption what we do on, on any facilities, I think Amit spoken about the energy consumption, energy guzzler kind of CO2 emissions. Snyder Electric helps you to become a carbon neutral. And for that, how do we actually make our product digitized, make our product kind of remotely monitored? There is something called a green premium product, which, what we normally advertise to the people to use it. And in any ecosystems, electrical ecosystem or distribution systems you talk about, the Snyder products are green premium products. And green premium products is not for India, it's for the global. And when any LED, I mean, your leadership in electrical, uh, I mean, energy distributions or the design you call it, that LED building has to be a green premium building today. So on this modality, this some, some, some amount of CO2 emissions is actually part of a global strategies for every organization which has a place on this. A Snyder Electric partner with all of these companies to make sure that we actually contribute to CO2 emissions. And this is, happens through the digitization world and can be remotely controlled. You don't have to run behind the machine which got a failure. You have to remotely monitor that the way the things has to be monitored. And this has to be assigned to the person who can actually sort out the challenges on an immediate basis. Think for a moment, we are a patient in a hospital and things is not getting attended for 60 seconds. I think it's a disaster. It's a disaster of feeling actually. And Snyder, has in kind of an R&D facilities to make sure each and every point, either it's a facility management or it's a machine controlling, or it's a kind of a doctors who you need to really know how are the scheduling is all about his, his whole day. To optimize any of these resources, including your, I mean, maintenance, o &M part of it, Snyder plays a big role in that, or equivalent of Snyder plays a big role in that. I mean, this is what is broadly I would like to highlight uh, on this. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Vinod Kumar Muni, Director of Schneider Electric, that uh, how important role being played by Schneider uh, in terms of entire healthcare ecosystem infrastructure. Uh, need of the hour is remote monitoring through technology, and that's how uh, Schneider is uh, changing the rule of the game. And in previously also, we saw the presentation by Amit that uh, kind of software innovation they're using to transform the healthcare uh, scenario. I, I once again thank uh, Mr. Prasanna Venkatesh, Manisha Kumar, Vinod Kumar Muni and Dr. Govindya Yathish for joining us for this interesting uh, discussion on building resilient and sustainable healthcare uh, infrastructure and all the previous speakers of the inaugural session as well for making sustainable healthcare conclave the Karnataka chapter series a success. I'm sure deliberations made today uh, for last two, three hours will be of utmost importance to make that blueprint to move into the right direction in terms of building that sustainable, resilient, and effective healthcare ecosystem, which is, uh, uh, which is uh, powered by, if I say so, technology and innovation. Thank you so much, all of you. But before we end, let me invite Mr. Pratik Moitro, Senior General Manager of Schneider Electric, to give the vote of thanks of this series. Over to you, Mr. Pratik. Good afternoon to all of you. For any country to um, do well, basically education and health is the most important pyramid. And healthcare is how important that is shown by the pandemic. Means you today, whatever the infra we are having it, that is fallen short during the pandemic. You cannot create n number of beds in a hospital, n number of hospital in a city, only way is that how efficiently you can use these facilities that will create uh, the future and 
to serve the community well. And for that, uh, you need to be really uh, efficient, you need to be sustainable in terms of uh, using your resources well. And that's where a company like Schneider uh, and all the hospitals comes together and to create the world more sustainable. And I take this opportunity to thank all the eminent speaker who has thrown the light in this particular important topic and how we can be sustainable and what all efforts we are making it. I am, I am feeling proud that uh, everybody is doing their bit and we are uh, discussing this topic in a right time and we need to put right efforts to make it uh, successful. Before ending this, I would like to say we are also running a Green Udhya initiative which is nothing but we are looking to create a community. Basically, when as a company, I think uh, to make company sustainable, then to society, to all the other people, but it need to start with every individual. And every individual need to think that how he can able to contribute in day-to-day -day life to become the world more sustainable and more livable. For this, uh, we are started this uh, initiative called Green Udhya. Let's pledge to become a Green Udhya for the country and join our community. Thank you all. Thanks, uh, thanks, uh, Mr. Pratik Muitro, Senior General Manager, Schneider Electric. Uh, and I'll just to add to that that uh, APAC News ne Network is also has also partnered with Schneider Electric for the Green Oath, the campaign, along with Ministry of Jal Shakti and NIUA, uh, to run this campaign in various parts of India and take this knowledge sharing platform where we're focusing on sustainability factor, be it for healthcare, water, or energy sector. Uh, with this, uh, we come to the end of this. Uh, Insightful event, I must say. Uh, let me invite Mr. Sangamitra Mohanty, co founder of APEC News Network, to come on stage and hand over the small token of appreciation from our end to our eminent speakers. Can we have those plans on uh, stage, please? A huge round of applause for all of our speakers. We can start with Mr. Prasanna Venkatesh, consultant in the office of the Chief Engineer, Healthcare and Family Welfare Department, Government of Karnataka. To Dr. Govindya Yathish, Unit Head, Apollo Hospitals, Bengaluru. To Dr. Govinda. Uh, to Ms. Manisha Kumar, COO and Cluster Head, HCG Hospitals. And to Mr. Vinod Kumar Muni, Director of Schneider Electric. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. With this, we come to the end as a one more. Do join us for the lunch uh, and thank you so much uh, for joining us today for the Sustainable Healthcare Conclave, Karnataka chapter organized by APEC News Network, Network and supported by Schneider Electric. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Take care.